This entire process of doing replication works great when the amount of data you have to initially replicate, the initial seed, is relatively small. If you think about it, when I've only got just a couple of articles, I've got a copy from one server to another, well, that couple of megabytes doesn't take very long for that initial copy to complete. But if the amount of data I'm required to copy is significantly larger, if I've got uh, many megabytes or, or terabytes of data that I've got to get copied just to get replication started, you might imagine that the amount of time it might take could be measured in days or weeks as opposed to just sheer hours. And so for that reason, Microsoft has included some new functionality here in Windows Server 2012 R2 to support the cloning of the DFSR database and then the manual seeding of that content from one server to another. By using just a simple robocopy command as opposed to doing it through DFSR, you can greatly accelerate the amount of time it takes in order to get that content transferred from one server to the other. Now, in order to do this, however, because this is brand new content, Microsoft has exposed it only using Windows PowerShell. It's not available here in the DFS Management Console at all. And in fact, there's a couple of steps you have to go through and a variety of PowerShell commands you'll need to use. Doing so gives us a couple of benefits. Number one, it shows us how to accomplish this task. Number two, it actually shows us how to create everything that we just created before, but this time using PowerShell. Now you'll notice here on our server file one that I've actually removed the replication group. I've removed the namespace as well that I created or the, the folder that I associated with that namespace. Back over here, if I switch to file two, I wanna show you that I've even deleted the content that was copied over so that we essentially start here from scratch. Now the point of this was that in order for us to do this cloning of the DFS database, in order for us to pre-seed the content onto this other server, we have to start from essentially a zero state. So no existing replication going on. For us to be able to do that, I've brought up a list of the PowerShell commands we'll need to actually use to create this replication group and then to facilitate the cloning of the database and then the pre-seeding of the content. Over here, we've got a couple tabs here, and I've got some PowerShell commands that I've set up that I just want to step you through so you can take a look at how these groups end up being created here with Windows PowerShell. Let's start by creating a new DFS replication group called Company Shared, which I'll run over here to create. With that done, we've got a couple other steps in the process, the next of which is to create a new DFS replicated folder. So I'll run that again. So that creates that replicated folder. Everything we're doing here at this point is what we've already done back in the graphical user interface earlier on in this module. I then want to add a DFSR member, so file one as the first member in this group that I'm created, company shared. Let me run that selection here. So this now has created the replication group. It's created the folder. It's now added that, uh, that member, file one. Our next step then is to go about setting the membership and also identifying what the content path will be. That's this line here, which is broken up into two different lines. So uh, the folder name being company shared and the content path being that E colon backslash company shared that we used before. We are also setting this machine file one as the primary member of the group that we're creating. So if I come back here and now right click to run the selection, that will go about modifying the group membership. And then lastly, I need to update that configuration into Active Directory. So if I run this last one, that will actually provide all the information so that Active Directory is now aware of the changes that we've just made. If I come back down here to my DFSR console and refresh things, this should now give me a list of essentially the company shared folder that we created before. I did this, as I said, for a couple of reasons. One, because we need to start in exactly this state in order for us to clone that DFS database over to our other server. And also because it provides us that PowerShell example of how to accomplish what we just did back in the graphical user interface. Now our environment here only has a single Active Directory domain controller, and so we don't have to worry about that, that update to Active Directory replicating around through multiple sites and different locations with different Active Directory replication schedules. But in an environment where you do, you may want to pay attention to a specific event that will exist in your event ID or in your event log that corresponds with the successful creation of everything we've done thus far. Well, let me bring up the event viewer here because I want to take you down to the applications and services logs here under DFS replication where you'll want to pay attention to a specific event ID, which is number 4112 here. This says that the DFS replication service has initialized the replicated folder at the local path. This is right here and that this member is the designated primary member for the replicated folder. Wait for this event to occur, because you want this to be completely configured before we go through the next step, which is to actually create the clone of the DFSR database. 
So let me come back down here and actually bring back up my uh, list of PowerShell commands we want to take a look at. The command we want to look at is over here on my second tab, where we're going to create, number one, a new folder called DFSR clone, and then we'll export out down here the clone of the database to that location. So let's first here run the first selection that creates the folder, and then the second selection here creates the export of the database. And whoops, got a little error message here because I'm attempting to export out the wrong volume. Uh, this volume parameter here identifies the volume on which the DFSR location actually exists. So where have we actually created that DFSR replication group? So let me come back here and rerun this again, see if I get it correct the second time. Yes, indeed, that is the export of the database. This export of the database is something that I can now transfer over to my other computer in order to then import it in on that other machine. Now you'll notice here whenever I do that, that it actually gives me some hints as far as how to appropriately do that. I need to first actually robocopy the, uh, the DFSR clone folder, the contents of that folder, out to that other machine. I also then need to copy out all the contents of that initial replication seed, so the entire contents of the folder, out to that remote location as well. Now, both of these use the robocopy command, which is a bit more efficient than all the other management, all the other activities that are going on when DFSR actually does its work. So this use of robocopy should take quite a bit less time than would it take if I were just letting DFSR end up transferring the content over to that remote location. Let's actually now go back to number three here, where we can take a look at this pair of robocopy commands that will copy the database, the, the clone, as well as the content itself. This first one here, RoboCopy, actually copies the contents of eCompany shared to the C drive on that server file too. And you'll notice over here on the right that I'm actually preserving all of the recommended switches that are down here in this hint down below. These switches will ensure that all this content ends up on the remote server in the most appropriate way possible. In addition, I'll need down here to use RoboCopy again to copy the contents of DFSR clone to that location over there on the other server. So let's actually run this first one, which if I do a little time acceleration here, lets me show you that the entire process took, what is that, about 16 seconds in order to copy those 236 directories and a little shy of 1,500 files. Let us now go through the second step of the process, which is to copy the clone file over to our other machine as well. So I'll run the selection here and copy that much smaller file. Once we've done that, our final step in the process is to make sure that the files on the other server are indeed exactly the same as the files on this server which we can do with this command here, get DFSR file hash. If I run that, you'll see it pro provides a whole list of file hashes here for, in this case, just the, the folders. We could dig further if we wanted to. On this server, we want to make sure that these match with the file hashes that exist over on that other server as well. This will ensure that there hasn't been any sort of change that occurred while that file was in transit from one server to another. Obviously, if you're dealing with a very large number of files, you'll probably want to use PowerShell to script this process and show you only those file hashes that may be different. Those are the ones that you may need to retransfer. Now, with this completed, we have the final steps in the process, which occur over on our other machine, File 2. So let me pop over here to our server, File 2, and complete things over here by bringing up a further set of PowerShell commands that we're interested in taking a look at. These begin with the very first step, which is to import in the DFSR clone that we've copied over from our server file one. Now, I want to just prove to you over here that uh, if I go to C and I take a look at the DFSR clone folder, these are the two files that were created. They're essentially just configuration files that we can use to precede all the information DFSR requires. If I run this, this will import in the clone file and then make it available here on this machine. I'll click yes here to approve the import of the database clone. And then we'll finish the process by using the PowerShell equivalent of all the other things that we did earlier back in the graphical user interface. So adding this second server in as a DFSR member, uh, setting the membership to include this new server, as well as the, the group name, folder name, and content path. Now again, remember that uh, we're still using that content path on this machine being on the C drive as opposed to E drive on the other machine. We also need to add the DFSR connection, just like we did before, and then update the uh, configuration file back from Active Directory once again. So all these things are essentially just replicating everything that we accomplished back on the graphical user interface, but completing it over here using Windows PowerShell. This completes what we need to do in order to not only, number one, export and import the DFSR database, but also precede this server with all the appropriate initial content that will allow future replications to occur without a lot of delay.